What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Open Thought Game Channel. I'm AJ Gels. I just noticed I do this almost at the start of every video. I don't know why. It's like when I press the press my record button, I'm always in like the poorest position I can be in my chair. So how's it going, everybody? Uh, like I said, uh, I tweeted this out earlier today. I do some family stuff and some just various other stuff. Um, <laughs> this uh, was going to be uh, I, I said postponed. I think I meant delayed, not to Sunday, but just to later today. Uh, I feel really bad because last week. Um, I just didn't get, I, I, I really didn't do the show, um, and I just feel like I've been really coming in late um, for the past while, and I apologize for that, I'm really trying to get back on um, schedule, there's the word, uh, like I said, uh, I had some family stuff, don't worry, nothing bad, just had to be on the phone for a little bit uh, this morning, uh, I also woke up late this morning at like 11 o'clock, thought, oh shit, uh, I had to get something to my editor, uh, and then I realized, oh wait, that article was due on Sunday, not today. So, just you know, some <laughs> just some stupid stuff on my part, um, and all that. So, like I said, uh, I apologize for this being up late today. Other than that, guys, happy belated N seven day. Didn't I, I forgot to do a video uh, about that this Monday um, with the election and everything? I talked about this in a little video uh, I did two three days ago. Um, you know, leading into Thursday, um, and all that, so, uh, obviously, I have, uh, news for you guys this week, uh, as I said, I would, uh, two weeks ago, um, and I really, I'm trying to think, I feel like I had something I, I had to, I wanted to talk about, um, oh, uh, I, I remember now, uh, because later today, I'm going, well, I mean, it's like six o'clock at night right now, um, I'm in a few hours, I'm planning on going, uh, catching the last showing of, um, I think it's Arrival, or it's Arrivals, I can't remember, uh, that new, um, Alien, I guess not Invasion, but new Alien movie, um, that's, uh, in theaters, uh, I'm going to be doing a review, uh, cause I also do movie reviews, uh, for my, uh, you know, my day job, uh, and I was curious to know, uh, if you guys are interested, I will start, uh, throwing anybody out there, uh, who are interested, um, you know, uh, you can tweet at me, uh, hit me up on Facebook, uh, just go through, get hold of me through my website, uh, and I will be happy to kind of, um, do put those up on my website along with game reviews and also on that uh, note with game reviews um, I got a bunch you know uh, Deus Ex, uh, ReCore I, I'm, I'm, I'm basically waiting to finish the game before I put up the review um, I'm just kind of behind on doing some of that just um, doing some editing um, revisals and whatnot um, maybe adding some stuff here uh, to make them a little um, a little more in depth because uh, I'm, I'm limited on word choice for my uh, my day job in the paper um, and I'm not on my website so I might uh, add some stuff uh, here and there um, for the when I put them up on the website but uh, I'm definitely right now working on my, my Deus Ex one that'll be going live um, mostly because the game's done um battlefield one titanfall two those three will be going up uh i'll put recore up when i'm done with it mafia three when i'm done with it um call of duty infinite warfare when i'm done with it uh i know i'm done with gears of war four uh i'm just waiting to get uh my xbox live gold uh subscription back uh so i can play the multiplayer and i can give a full review of that game um so that's kind of a look at everything that is coming up um Review wise, I'm trying to think anything else. Uh, I think that's all. All right, guys. So here's the news. Uh, getting, like I said, uh, I need to think of a better transition. Either way, Wii U production is apparently ending soon in Japan. Uh, a, a statement by a Nintendo representative uh, to Nintendo or to uh, IGN. Uh, this article by Alex Osborne of IGN. Uh, this Nintendo representative. Um, uh, gave the statement uh, as recently posted by Nintendo on the Wii U website in Japan Wii U production will end in the near future for the Japanese domestic market we have nothing to announce in terms of exact timing we can confirm that as of today all Wii U hardware that will be made available in the North America market uh, North American market for this fiscal year has already been shipped to our retail partners we encourage anyone who wants Wii U to communicate with the preferred retail outlet to monitor availability, end quote. Um, not really much commentary I have on this one. Uh, I think the Wii U... Uh, I think the, the Wii U is a swing in the miss. Um, although I see a lot of what they were trying to do with the Wii U in the Nintendo Switch, um, which I think is going to be interesting to see how they pull off, uh, if they can pull it off. Um, 
which I guess uh, kind of brings us into the next article uh, about the Nintendo Switch. Uh, apparently, uh, let me see here. I'm actually I'm actually going to read this article just because there's um, stuff to unpack in here, and I think it's just easier to uh, read this particular article. I'll be doing this uh, with another one um, later. This article uh, by Joe Scrubbles of IGN. Um, forgive me if you can tell, uh, my setup's a little different. Usually, uh, I face another wall in my apartment, but my lights are there, and I always get this big shine in my background. Um, so now I'm on, I mean, because I kind of have like an L shape uh, with my desks. Um, so it just, just with the way everything is, um, I'm using uh, my left hand to scroll through my computer, which is now on my left side, not my right. Yeah, again, a bunch of weird stuff. I'm right-handed, so it's kind of weird. Um, so now that I got that, I think that was what I was forgetting early on. Man, this show has been five, six minutes in, and I'm already really, really just I've I've jumped the shark in terms of sanity, guys. I I apologize, <laughs> son of a bitch. All right, uh, the article reads: Capcom is currently planning what it will develop for n the Nintendo Switch, but has indicated that it may not be bringing games designed for PS4 or Xbox One to the new console. Nintendo has long been criticized for its rel. rel relatively underpowered hardware sorry and the result uh in the resulting lack of attention from third-party developers and publishers in that regards hopes for the switch were raised when its revealed trailers showed the console seemingly running skyrim special edition and an nba 2k game i'm assuming the new one 2k 17 uh as well as when or that was that i'm sorry that was an add-on the the article says and an nba 2k 17 game so Sorry, I'll, I'll try and make it clear when I'm adding commentary. Um, as well as when Nintendo revealed a fairly comprehensive list of third-party partners for the platform. Now, commentary. Um, uh, see, this is what, it, like I said, I, I think that 2K game was 2K17, or else I would assume. Uh, this is something that has kind of been brought up, um, that uh, they did... It has been brought out that um, that trailer that we did see, I talked about this on the show um, when I got this news, was that um, all the images that were on the tablets were aired um, or were added in post-production. So I'm not sure we saw that console running in um, the wild. So I, I, I don't know. Maybe those were kind of what they do with the big trade shows where they, you know, have the have the the game console in a box yet what's really running the games making everything look all pretty is a super high powered uh pc so who the hell knows i mean i wouldn't say super high powered um pc for those because they didn't look super high powered pc but you know what i'm getting at um who knows if what we saw was even what the nintendo switch will run as um i mean i'll still say the new legend of zelda looks beautiful uh just some of the cool stuff i've seen on that website uh or uh, for um the Nintendo Switch looks really good. It's just I'm really curious as to how this all will um, kind of uh, blow out. And I mean, and again, it makes sense why um, they've been running low on third-party support. Um, when they don't have as much power, uh, they kind of have to scale back what they do with uh, the PS4 and the Xbox One. So, I mean, it's kind of hinders Nintendo, in my opinion, as far as um, dedicated home consoles go. So, okay, continuing. Uh, however, as spotted by Video Gamer, uh, it seems that at least one of those partners still has some reservations about the Switch supporting traditional multi-platform releases. Uh, the article quotes, We are currently carrying out research with regards to multi-platform implementation of software for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One on the Nintendo Switch, a Capcom spokesman said in an investor Q&A. Uh, the quote continues, However, we do feel that there are differences in the desired direction and the play style of the Nintendo Switch and those of the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, given the, uh, end quote. Given the Switch's positioning as a home console, uh, that can be taken on the move. It's unclear what Capcom sees as the difference in play style. Perhaps more likely is uh, that the rumors of the Switch's uh, relative lack of power uh, alongside current gen home consoles are true with Capcom unwilling to downgrade its most intensive experiences. That's I, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to bet money that that's exactly what it is. Um, uh, which like I said, I, I, I'm going to, again, and I'll also bet money that this thing is not anywhere near as powerful as the PS4, or the Xbox one, um, especially with the, uh, with the upgrade that have gone into the one S uh, and the pro and slim. Um, 
which I'm not I'm not going to talk about the Pro, but I believe the Pro came out this week. Um, if you're interested out there, they're out there. I have been hearing rumors, though, that the Pro has been running slower with some games compared to the, the original PlayStation. And this is, again, stuff that I feared with the Pro. Sorry, tangent. Let's get back onto the Switch. Um, and again, I think this is exactly what I think a lot of people are worried about. Uh, I think this is uh, the biggest, I think, going to be the biggest downfall of the Switch. Uh, I was on a radio program. Uh, for my school not too long ago, and I was arguing with um, two people, uh, pro Nintendo, and I and I and I do think this is going to sell, but I do not think this is going to be PlayStation, or I don't think this is going to be Wii or PlayStation, PlayStation or Xbox numbers, just because I don't think it has the legs. I think this is going to sell to Nintendo fans, um, and again, more younger kids. I don't think this is a console for what the Wii really did was sell to the outside of the core gamer market. Where they sold to the really young and the really old. No offense to the really old. But, uh, like, the Wii is something that my grandma would use. Um, but I don't see them using the Nintendo Switch. So I just, I don't, which I think this is, they're, they're limiting their market kind of with, I think, what they do with the Wii U. Because, again, I don't think that the that the outside, that the fringes, like I said, the old and the young, the really young, uh, didn't buy the Wii U. Because I don't think they had this whole grasp that I think our current... Uh, you know, the current, um, I'd go 10 to 40, and I'm probably being generous on, generous on both ends, um, of the, the, I, the core market for video games, I think that these these, fr these far fringes don't really have the, you upgrade every um, couple of years to the newest product. So I think that was that contributed to the Wii's downfall, or the Wii U's downfall, and I think this is going to not contribute to the Switch's downfall, but I don't think the Switch is going to do as well, because... Uh, I believe, as far as I'm concerned, with dedicated home pro consoles, I don't think the um, the core gaming market is going to love this. I think this is going to be for Nintendo fans, um, and it's just it's not going to switch people like me who like their dedicated home console experience. Um, if I want to go on the go, I'll play my PS Vita. And please release the PS Vita two or Vita two, whatever. But come on, do it. The Vita was a great console that they just let die. Moving on. Sorry. Uh, continuing uh, with the article. At Capcom, the ca uh, at Capcom, the spokesman continued, we, d we determine which platform to release a title for after considering the features of both our software and the hardware in question, believing we must bring the enjoyment of our games to their maximum potential. Uh, none of this is to say that Capcom won't release Nintendo Switch games. However, the publisher is, has a strong partnership with Nintendo. The publisher has a strong partnership with Nintendo, with flagship franchises like Monster Hunter, currently exclusive to Nintendo hardware, and it seems that may continue. It is excellent to have the market invigorated with new hardware launches like Nintendo Switch, uh, following first party in order to introduce our own content we are currently moving forward with internal planning and analysis as a partner company uh we almost um the article uh, concludes we almost certainly won't hear more about capcom's plans for switch until next year the nintendo announcing new details about the console including the games uh, the game its game lineup at a nintendo direct in january ahead of a march 2017 release um Again, uh, like that article again was by Joe Scrubbles of IGN. Uh, again, I just I don't I don't like it, man. I just I I'm I'm really 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 um. I, I, again, I, I I'm I'm very very wary about the Switch, um, and I think this is going to be a problem that I think a lot of the uh, big developers, these third party, the support that this is going to have. I don't think we are going to see. PS4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch games. I think we are going to see a lot like what Nintendo always does, where it is where Capcom is going to make this exclusive Nintendo Switch game, just like they do with Monster Hunter being exclusively on the handhelds. Um, that's what I think it's going to happen, and I wouldn't. I, again, I, I this isn't something I brought up when the Switch first got announced, um, but I would not be surprised to see it happen. So. You know what? I might do the uh, start making this uh, as opposed to writing notes. Just actually read the articles and do commentary as I read the articles because I think I, I feel like this is, or maybe I'll, I'll especially for this with with the shorter weeks because it feels like I can get more in depth with this stuff and I can, I, I can focus my thoughts a lot better. Um, 
Oh, we're moving on. Uh, apparently, Xbox One has won October. Uh, this sets the fourth straight month that October is the highest selling console. Has beat out the PlayStation 4 again. Uh, really good for uh, Xbox One. Again, I think this is a uh, fault of the PlayStation 4 Pro. Um, well, maybe I think PlayStation might eke out in November because of the Pro. Um, but I think their, their marketing for the Pro was just off. Um, I don't think... Uh, again, everybody's... Again, a lot of the people that I'm hearing that are loving it are in the industry. You know, they are um, people you know, with the gaming press uh, that I'm assuming are having them. I, I just don't see the pro selling well with college students like me um, with fixed incomes. Uh, I, I think the pro is a, a luxury item that I just I don't see doing extremely well past launch or really past the holiday. Um Either way, uh, I'm going to read a quote. Um, that, this kind of all comes directly from the article, um, but it's a quote within a quote, one of those. So I quote, Xbox One was once again the best-selling console in October in the US, UK, and Australia. End quote. The article then continues to read, according to results given to Microsoft by the NPD Group and GFK Entertainment. Um, GFK, I believe, is... Uh, NPD, I believe, takes care of the US, and GFK is um, UK and um, Australia and whatnot. Uh, article by Seth G. Macy of IGN. Um, apparently, CD Projekt Red uh, recently announced a, a shareholder meeting uh, for November 29th. Uh, many are kind of fearing uh, what this means because apparently this uh, will be a vote on measures to defend against uh from to defend them from hostile takeover, um, and despite everybody, you know, kind of going, uh, what's this mean? Has there there has not been an offer made on CD Projekt Red? This is not this is CD Projekt Red kind of preemptively, especially I guess after this uh, the success that was Witcher Three last year. Um, I mean, we, it, this is the thing I'm really looking forward to Cyberpunk 2077, seeing um, CD Projekt Red break out with a game that isn't The Witcher. Um, I'm, I'm very excited with how they're going to bring their um, great RPG, their great, this great studio, what they're going to do with this game. Um, and I think this is just a move to try and maintain their independence, maintain their um, ownership of their IPs, the ownership of their company and their process. Uh, so best of luck out there um, to CD Projekt Red. I really love you guys' games um, and the whatnot. Uh, article by Eddie Macooch of GameSpots. Mod support after a long, long wait has finally come uh, to a PS4 for Fallout 4 uh, and is on its way with the new game updates. I'm going to read a quote from the article, uh, and I quote, PS4 mod support is still significantly limited compared to, the Xbox, to that on Xbox One, however. Like Skyrim Special Edition, PS4 mods cannot use external assets and are limited to one gigabyte of storage on the console to Xbox One's 5. End quote article by vicky blake of ign uh let's see here uh akuma will or akuma i believe it's pronounced akuma uh will be the next street fighter 5 dlc character article by matt porter of ign i have no commentary on that actually moving on to some co more commentary on the mod support though i'm really surprised uh because i honestly i i this the only thing i'll add to that is i'm very surprised because i could have sworn that they actually said no we're, we're we're done trying with this all right Moving on to some, uh, I guess, some interesting um, sales thing, you know, like the actual market in the industry of the uh, games, work, um, of the games industry. Uh, the first week sales for Infinite Warfare are, are is down about 50% uh, compared to that of Black Ops 3. Um, the article reads, and I quote, according to GFK Chart Track, uh, launch sales have fallen 8.4%. The major difference between the two releases is Infinite Warfare's lack of la a last gen Xbox 360 PS3 release. But even taking that into account, only current gen console release, the drop is still significant at 43.6%. Um, now, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, when I said launch sales have fallen, uh, I. Must have forgotten the type of number. That was 48.4%, not 8.4. My bad. Uh, article by Jeff Scrubbles of IGN. Now, because uh, I, I read through IGN's review of this as well, they did something that I'm really surprised, because I, I finished the game, I just haven't uploaded the entire thing yet. Um, they, they didn't like the sort of, I wouldn't call it sandbox, but the sort of openness of the campaign, 
which I disagree entirely. I really liked that. Uh, I, I really like the new step, the step in a new direction uh, for a Call of Duty. Um, I think the Jackal strikes got a little repetitive. They got a little annoying, but I think like the actual, like the ship assaults were pretty fun because they were usually something a little different. You know, it, you know, sometimes, you know, it was either, uh, you know, we're playing with the Jackal or we're inserting into the ship and stealthing our way through. You know, that was fun. Uh, the actual missions were really fun. Uh, I think it was Mitch Dyer. He tweeted out something. Um, he's surprised to not see anybody uh, really in the games media or any of these reviews really mention um, this game's take and kind of realistic feeling. How to put it? The, the idea behind war, um, which really we're getting a lot of games that are kind of doing this. I don't think Titanfall 2 did it. Um, but I know Battlefield 1 did that. Um, the movie Hacksaw Ridge did this. Um, this game does it too. It really kind of gives you a real look into the eyes of what war is and kind of what you have to be willing to sacrifice to win in a war. Um, you know, that's a lot of what um, Infinite Warfare is really kind of about. The the main narrative, it kind of it pushes it with this, this story of um, the main character, Nick Reyes, uh, wanting to get everyone home safe and constantly, constantly, constantly people are trying to teach him you can't always get everyone home safe. Sometimes, pe you know, it's war. People die. Um, it happens, you know. Um, but, I w but again, I will say, I, I think um, I would give, because, again, I, I score on the 10-point scale, not the 100-point. Uh, IGN, I think they're scoring it right now. It's a, they give it a 7-7. Seven, seven. I'd give it a solid 8. Um, so, again, we're not that different. But we're different, for, but we're that way for different reasons. They think the story held the game back. Well, I sit and go, I think it's the stale-ass multiplayer um, that honestly, without it, it, it feels a lot like um, Titanfall Two without the Titans. It's and a little faster. Uh, and I think Zombies is just a it, is. I want to see Call of Duty get rid of Zombies. Uh, not necessarily get rid of multiplayer because I understand it's a big it, it's a big draw. But I really want to see them focus on their story again. Um, and again, I, I think uh, one of my Twitter followers out there, if you check this video out, um, Rasmus something. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, dude. If you're watching, I, I can't. I can't remember. Uh, your Twitter handle, um, uh, but you know, me and him had a had a discussion sometime last year on Twitter um, about Call of Duty Ghosts. Uh, I really I really dug Ghosts. I'd really love to see a sequel to Ghosts. Um, and again, I feel like that was another one that really focused on story and did it well. Um, I'm also really kind of sick of this modern war you know, future war thing that war games are doing, you know, uh, with again, Titanfall's doing, but Titan, which I, which I think also might've hurt, um, infinite warfare's kind of, um, hurt their sales a little bit. The fact that Titanfall came out the week before, um, and it was a similar kind of futuristic other planet war game. Um, and I think battlefield one coming out, you know, the week before that. So three straight weeks of first person shooters and call of duty was the end. So I think there might've been a little fatigue, uh, of the genre right there. Um, but yeah, overall, I, I, I just, I, I would really love to see the next Call of Duty game kind of continue on with this idea that Infinite Warfare brought out, because uh, I, I, I think I've said this um, in other things, that I, I it feels like it was a demo for this really cool idea, um, because it was so short, uh, so I'd really like to start seeing more expansive, uh, larger stories, kind of like this one, uh, more heartfelt stories, and, and everybody wants to tell me that Modern Warfare was really good. I didn't like Modern Warfare for some reason. I, I, I know, I know, shocking. I, I wasn't a fan. I, and, and, I, and I've gone back and played it, and I can't figure out why I'm not a fan. It, it, it's just, it, it's something in that game just didn't resonate with me. Um, and I played the first Black Ops. There was something about the second Black Ops that I just, I, I couldn't get through it. And people keep telling me how great 3 was, and I feel like I'll go back and play it sometime. Um, but again, for me, Call of Duty, I, I fell in love with Call of Duty back with Call of Duty 2, bigger than 1, you know, World War II shooter. Um, but that was when I really started playing shooters, you know, Call of Duty, you know, back in the PS2, you know, the World War II, you know, that, Medal of Honor, when that was big, um, before it kind of died. So um, I know I'm getting kind of into the weeds here. But yeah, overall, I think uh, Infinite Warfare, fantastic game. Um, it doesn't shock me to see the sales drop, uh, especially with the, uh, it had a, the reception to the beta was really poor. Um the week before, um, or not the week before, you know what I mean, when the beta came out, there was um, some really weak reception to the beta, so I'm not surprised to see this happen, um, but it is kind of sad, because I do think this is one of the better uh, Call of Duty games uh, for the past while, so, kind of leave that as my piece, article by Joe Scrubbles by GN, I'm sorry, my nose itches, I don't like talking into my hand, because it's weird, um, the final, uh, final thing I'm going to do today, I'm going to uh, actually 
read an, I'm going to read another article. Like I said, I actually kind of like doing this uh, just because this one's pretty long. Uh, it talks about all the new um, story details we have on Mass Effect Andromeda. Um, if you, I haven't said, uh, I know there are people out there who've grown really tired with Bioware. I am not one of them. I love Bioware. I really like the RPG-ness. Um, I've always kind of liked the whole how their games are kind of formulaic, but that's also one of the things I'm really hoping that Andromeda changes. I really hope we do kind of get out of this, uh, you know, you do this to romance this character, and it, it, it's almost like pinpoint mathematical formula. I really hope we kind of change it and we get a new story that's really kind of deep and um, mature and very emotional, um, which already everything that I'm seeing for, you know, I, they, they led with the female uh, character Ryder, um, uh, it, whatever the first name is, Ryder, that's, you know, it's like Shepard in the first game. Um, you know, they're leading with Ryder, which I will say uh, for the original Mass Effect um the female ship or femme chef as a lot of people call her again i was ha I, I had an argument with somebody not an argument but a discussion with somebody and i'll agree with them uh that the female shepherd had the better voice acting uh the male shepherd was just really weak um but uh like i said i'm talking i'm talking in drama because n7 day was this monday this a bunch of this information came out i forgot to do a video for it uh there was a new cinematic trailer really cool uh really neat looking trailer it kind of brings out this idea that the that who we are in this world we are the aliens now we aren't the you, you know what i mean we we aren't it's not like we're traveling within our own galaxy we're in a totally different galaxy so I'm, I'm super interested in this um i we've only heard, i i've caught bits and pieces of the male writers um voice acting but something uh i somebody did tell me and i really do find this interesting um it's kind of doing what um oh come on brain dragon age 2 did where um when you, when the game starts you choose between uh um, the male or female lead character and then the other character is still in the game because they're siblings in this one they aren't you know it's not just pick one or the other no there's siblings so you kind of either play the male character or the female character um and then the other one is with you as kind of like a party member throughout the game i kind of wonder if they're going to do what fallout 4 did and let you customize both characters so you can have them kind of look like each other i i i don't know how it's going to work just yet um but i am very excited and i'm sorry i'll actually get into this article now instead of all my speculation uh but uh actually what i'm sorry again one quick thing for uh i believe march 21st is enough is still um what we're hearing is the release date there was something else that kind of came out and kind of backed that up um but we're still not but there still has not been an exact date but i think March 21st is still looking like that's the date. So, okay, here we go. Article by Jonathan Dornbush of IGN. This is an article uh, entitled First Mass Effect Andromeda Story Details Revealed. So here we go. Uh, share why Andromeda isn't just Mass Effect 4. Uh, okay, here we go. The article reads, The first official details about Mass Effect Andromeda's plot, the writer family's place in it all, and new gameplay details have all been revealed via Game Informer's latest cover story on the upcoming Bioware RPG. The latest Mass Effect game's namesake uh, comes from the Andromeda Initiative, which was established around the time of Mass Effect 2, according to Game Informer's story. The Initiative's goal is to find a new home, and the group goes about doing this by creating four arcs each of which carrying a different alien race. The Arcs are set to make their way to the Andromeda Galaxy, specifically to investigate the Helios Cluster and its inhabited... Yeah, and, and its inhabitable golden worlds. Players come into the Initiative's mission as either the son or daughter of the leader of Pathfinder of the Human Arc. Uh, remember, the male-female playable options for Andromeda are actually brother and sister. Uh, as either Scott or Sarah Ryder, so there's a first names uh the children of alec players assume the role of the pathfinder at the outset of the game as the designation is passed on to one of alec's children okay that was worded a little weird so there we go we we play as one of the kids creative director Ma uh, mac walters also noted to game informer that though andromeda kicks off with an entirely new focus and set of protagonists the game is not necessarily the start of a new trilogy it is it is come on Come on, this is a new trilogy, and if it isn't, I'll eat my shoe. Don't don't hold me to that because I don't want to eat shoe. <laughs> uh, at the, and I quote: "At the end of this, we want it to feel like a story was completed." End quote. Walters told GI. Okay, 
yeah, I, I'm I'm good with that. I don't want to end on a cliffhanger, but I I still think that there's going to be an overarching trilogy, but that each individual. But I want that's the way I like a trilogy to be, kind of like um, the Uncharted franchise, where we end each with a story. But we ha well, there wasn't really. I guess this isn't a good analogy because they don't have an overarch. There is overarching characters and whatnot, but not a story. That's what I like, especially you know if we're going to plan a trilogy, have a big open art like open ended story. But each individual game will have its own narrative and you know what I mean. Obviously there will be a next game, but we still have some um, conclusions, some finality. Uh, the Human Arc, the Hyperion, that sounds fucking awesome, uh, finds itself at the wrong location after a 600 year trip. However, when it loses contact with the other three arcs, as well as the Nexus, a command center sent ahead of the arcs to the Andromeda Galaxy. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I, I, read, I, I read that with the wrong inflection. Where it loses contact with the other three arcs, as well as the Nexus, a command center sent ahead of the arcs to the Andromeda Galaxy. Okay, there we go. Sorry, that was, that makes, I hope that makes more sense, that, the way I uh, add the inflection at the end of that one. Let's see here. A Game Informer story also uh, reveals that Ket, the first non-Milky Way alien species Andromeda players, will encounter in the game the demo gi experienced of uh, the game had the ket k-e-t-t -T, in an uh, um, antagonist role however the outlet notes the whole race may not prove to be enemies of the riders okay so that's... all right so it, it's maybe just like a sect of that alien race uh what happens to the hyperion uh, what other races may be encountered, and just what motivates the Ket are kept a secret, but Game Infor GI Game Informer uh, does reveal a host of changes to the Mass Effect formula coming with the fourth main entry in the franchise. Andromeda will see the return of loyalty missions for party characters, according to Game Informer. They won't affect the ending of the game, but these missions, as well as romantic options, will be available for the players allies two of whom game informer also revealed the asari pb p-e-e-b-e-e -E -E, uh and member of the pathfinder team liam let's see here uh i i'm not sure about liam but i know i believe we've seen pb the uh, she's been a lot in a lot of the promotional material uh she's uh the asari you know the asari with the um kind of like the war paint like across her eyes um may not paint but you yeah, know you know what i'm getting at uh, exploring, uh, echoing the Mako from the first Mass Effect players will also be able to explore planets in Andromeda via the Nomad. According to Game Informer, the Nomad has been designed in response to some of the criticisms of the Mako. The fact that the Mako, the Mako controlled like crap and wasn't fun. That, that was, that was, that was me. <laughs> that, that was my commentary. I didn't like the Mako. I'm outvoted on that. I know. I hated it still. Um, let's see here, including changes to handling, camera, and the vehicle's sense of speed. Thank God. The Nomad will be used to explore the open terrain of planets, including the new desert world Aladen, E-L-A-A-D-N, D-E-N, uh, which will feature plenty of story-focused and optional missions for players, as well as new additions like the still mysterious vaults and the occasional formidable super bosses. That sounds awesome. Um... From what I'm, from again, from rumors that I'm hearing about this, I, I, I think these these open planets are going to have more to do than what the uh, OG, the original Mass Effect, did. Because that game had absolute crap. Other than just complete some side quests, the, it didn't feel like you were actually completing any of the other side stuff that was there. The, like there was no point to it. It was just kind of annoying. Um, so I I am excited um, to. Uh, maybe see that we have something more to do. It does feel more like an RPG, like an actual open world, like with stuff. Um, I've also been hearing rumors that maybe we'll be like establishing colonies in certain areas, and you know, trading and protecting them, which which I think would be, would be really fun uh, if it if that is true. I do not know. Um, all right, let's continue. Uh, Andromeda will also see some combat alterations. Game Informer notes that while Mass Effect 3 used two systems that allowed for either a more thoughtful combat approach or a faster stop-and-go technique for its co-op, which returns in this game. Um, what? Okay, I'm not, I'm not sure exactly how that 
what that means. Uh, Andromeda will essentially combine the two for both modes. Okay, so there's going to be a co-op, I'm assuming, to play. So you one person plays one rider and the other can play as the other. Um, and I, I'm not really sure what stop it, how stop and go works, but whatever. Um, mostly because I didn't play Mass Effect 3 co-op. I only played single player. Uh, and uh, the, the thing can, uh, continues with quotes. Uh, it's much more dynamic and action-oriented, producer uh, Fabrice Condominis told Game Informer, uh, noting that, and I quote, we no longer do the Mass Effect 3 thing of pausing and aiming with the wheel up. Oh, that's cool. So it's probably more of like a freestyle changing your skill, you know, what skill or um, ability or whatever you want to use and same with the weapons. Uh, the player character will now automatically take cover when the player presses up against an object and can just e as easily pop out of cover while the jetpack replaces the game's traditional combat role and can be used to strategically take a higher vantage point in combat. I like and don't like that mostly because I like press the button to enter to enter cover instead of just get close to the wall i've never liked get close to the wall uh because it, it feel to me it feels too loose like i'm not in control um uh, i'm trying to think games uh, quantum break i believe used that i know the new tomb raider has used it um i'm i'm not a fan of that i prefer a press the button to get into cover system like uh gears of war style right like that that is what i like but this still sounds interesting and i'm interested to see what the hell the jetpack is going to be doing I'm sorry that I keep breaking to do commentary. I'm just, I, I, I'm so excited for this game. Um, in terms of customization, players uh, will continue to be able to design their writer as they see fit, as well as your brother or sister and your father. Oh, well, okay, even more than Fallout 4, but I, w I was kind of right. Uh, but rather than assigning your writer to a class, players can mix and match abilities unrestricted by class choices. Players can still specialize in a particular set of skills, and doing so will unlock certain profiles that provide additional bonuses to players, according to Game Inform. Interesting. Um, personally, I'm still a fan of, you know, like, the rogue knight, that, you know what I mean, like, the dedicated classes, but, and they have, like, subclasses, but that's interesting. Like I said, I, I kind of like the way it was done in Dragon Age, where, again, where it was, you, you pick your class, but then you have subclasses within that class. Um, but th this could be really interesting, again, depending on how it's done. Uh, getting near the end of the article here, just a few more paragraphs. Um, article continues, also offering more freedom to players is the decision to abandon the ability to let players go down uh, Paragon or Renegade character paths. Some dialogue options will be associated with different tones, but Andromeda Creative Director told uh, Game Informer the studio wanted to, and I quote, give you more opportunity to express yourself with different tones, but not necessarily give you some sort of binary meter by which uh, the whole world judges you, end quote. So it's what um, Inquisition did, where it kind of got rid of, where it kind of went down more um, tonal paths, where it's kind of, um, do you want to be a little more cerebral? Do you want to be aggressive? Do you want to be, which aggressive isn't, you know, like renegade, but it's it's just, it's aggressive. Or do you want to be a little more kind of like reserved and thoughtful? You know, it, it, it's more um, tonal decisions as opposed to, again, I know I'm repeating the word tonal and I think we all get it. Um, but again, I, I, I think that, uh, that's a, that's a really good way of doing this because I think, uh, Mass Effect 1 and 3, uh, or 1, 2, and 3 were all really too binary where you kind of had to make the decision at the very start and had to go down one path or the other, um, especially in 2 if you wanted to save all of your characters, which is a giant pain in the ass if you ask me. Um, way. Uh, all right. Article continues, uh, as for where the journey ends, Bioware is staying quiet on whether the game will have multiple endings, but Andromeda producer Michael Gamble told Game Informer that Andromeda's ending will be, and I quote, something different than the trilogy, end quote, because the game offers, and I quote, a different type of story, end quote. Uh, again, I, I the way I'm sitting here going is, I think each game is maybe not standalone, but you know, you know what I mean, like, I, I think it's going to have a definitive end. But some, I, 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 I'm going to revise what I said earlier where it, each game is going to have an end, but there's going to be an overarching narrative. I'm going to guess it's going to be something kind of like Uncharted, where it's going to be each game has its own start and end, but then there could always be a next one. So I think that's what we're going to be um, seeing here. Uh, moving on, final paragraph. During the N7 day, uh, during N7 day, the official Mass Effect Andromeda box art was released, as well as 
new special editions available for the game mass effect 2 and mass effect 3 were also made backwards compatible for xbox one players article is the, that's the end of the article jonathan dornbush of ign was the writer so there we go guys that is all the mass effect andromeda news uh that i have and probably that will well, unless we get something at psx but i doubt it um this should be all the mass effect andromeda news we get until the actual release i'm pretty pumped up i don't know about you guys tell me how you guys feel in the comments uh and if, also tell me if you like me more reading the article and giving commentary in that you know kind of spaced out tell me and i'll start doing that um i think it's easy it, it'll definitely be easier for me to get the show done just to keep from typing all the notes um but yeah like i said i i'm i'm really pumped up for this game um I hope you all you all are too. Again, if you also like this new setup, tell me, and I will start you know pointing my camera in this direction. I'm I'm feeling like I'm forgetting something, and I can't remember uh, pretty much everything that I've talked about. Like I said, uh, if you have any comments on any of that, you can go through the comments. But remember, you can also tweet at me, uh, hit me up on Facebook or my website. That's all down in the description below. And like I said, like you can comment. Or please, to do, um, if you're not already, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, come check the show out every week. Normally it goes live Saturday, noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. And other than that, guys, thank you for watching. I'm AJ Gels. This is the Unthar Gaming Channel. So until next time, guys, almost tried to turn stop the recording on my computer. I'm out.